to pitch Brand Talk, where insights meet innovation in the world of brands. I am Ritika Raj, and today we are exploring the world of health and wellness with a brand that's redefining how we perceive nutrition. True Elements is here to prove that healthy choices can be both delicious and satisfying. So let's welcome Akhil Menon, AVP for Brand and Growth at True Elements. Welcome, Akhil. I'm very happy to host you. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Ritika. Uh, and Akhil, you know, you recently launched a teaser video featuring the skipper Rohit Sharma and that has also garnered significant attention. So can you share some insights into the creative process behind the campaign and what the key factors or strategies that you believe contributed to its widespread appeal? Right. So, um, so uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Uh, so primarily for us, it was important uh, as a brand that towards the next year, like the current year, we wanted to grow our penetration. We want to grow our footprint, both in terms of distribution as well as growing the number of customers we have acquired, we have, or rather grow the number of customers that we can. We are basically going to acquire. And for that, we were definitely looking at different uh, formats. We were looking at, you know, um, different, different possibilities that opens up exists in front of us. And one of the things that uh, that came up loud and clear was, you know, we have to have somebody who can, uh, you know, help the consumers or people by and large who doesn't know us today uh, have some idea of who is True Elements or what is True Elements, right? I mean, uh, a brand of our size, uh, not a lot of people know about us. Uh, a few people who know about us are ardent fans, loyalists, whatever you may want to say, right? Like they are... They are the ones who basically helped us grow to where we are right now, right? So uh, we wanted to then start our growth spurt, the next hyper growth period. And that's where we kind of zoomed in on having a face on the brand who can be the voice of the brand, the face of the brand, right? And uh, True Elements as such has a very uh, a very uh, strong proposition today, right? Basically, we make food that does not lie, which means whatever you use, read on the pack is there inside the pack and vice versa, right? So even if it has got sugar in it, we would write that it has got sugar in it, no matter how right. small a quantity, right? Like it doesn't matter whether it is 0.1% or point or 1%. For us, if it has got sugar, it has got sugar and we should be honest enough, uh, be frank enough and truthful enough to come and say that it has got sugar, right? So that's where the genesis of the brand is. And we wanted someone who shares this value with us, right? I mean, someone who can say it as the way it is, right? Right. Uh, who's not afraid of speaking their mind, right? Um, and and if they find it's correct, it's correct. It's wrong, it's wrong, right? Doesn't matter what world right. is large thing, right? And uh, that's why I guess uh, the whole Rohit piece happened. I mean, Rohit, and and incidentally, we also understood that Rohit is also a two elements customer. So he's been using two elements seed mixes for a while now. So that kind of helped. And uh, when we started our conversation, it was only about, you know, endorsement or whatever. But we wanted to do something deeper because uh, we were sure that whoever we get, right, it, it, he or she cannot be just a mouthpiece, right? He, they they also yeah. have to have mm -hmm. some level of skin in the game. So, and, and uh, interestingly, Rohit also wanted to do something. So that's where the whole uh, licensing piece kind of Yes. stitched up for us and i think this is rohit's first uh licensing in food in in the entire fnb and in, in kind of uh, fnb space so so yeah that that kind of helps uh put things in perspective for us and uh answering your question on creative process i think uh we had to be very quick in our execution we had to be uh we, we were very sure that you know we had to reach out to the market before uh, the entire sale period starts yeah. and you know, we had to make ourselves uh, seen and heard out there so we were very sure that we have to launch it in september uh, and that's why possibly like you know and and we were sure of what's the kind of communication we wanted to say right uh, with rohit we were very sure that we want to build on a single piece of distinctive asset that we have which is our black packaging right and uh, today if you ask me one piece which everybody remembers of my brand after my rolled oats and chia seeds is the black packaging that they come in, right? And right. we've got extremely good reviews about it. And we've got uh, extremely rough reviews about it too. Like uh, there are groups which would say your black pack look awesome. Uh, yeah. And there are of course the group which says, why would you put food in a black pack? Don't you know <laughs> black in food is wrong, right? right. Kuch kala is a way to say something suspicious. And uh, in our case, it's a whole packet. 
uh, but we were sure that this gets us attention, right? Uh, yeah, it does. It get us, right? It, it does get us attention. Today, yeah. if you walk into a supermarket aisle, go to the breakfast aisle, all you would see is different colors, right? It's all, it's a rainbow over there. And something that helps us stand out is our black pack. So when you see our oats, when you see our muesli, you would know that, okay, this belongs to a different brand altogether. Yes. So that that then became, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a very, uh, what do you say, straightforward proposition or rather straightforward asset for us to build that uh, next time whenever you are out out there to buy something healthy look for true elements black pack right so that was our proposition we wanted to make black the color like black pack of true elements the solution for all the problems that comes with processed food right like thanks to social content social media uh, india is getting pretty uh, aware of what is going inside the pack, right? We are Absolutely. learning how to how to read our labels. Yes. We are learning how to read nutrition tables. Uh, we are now talking to that India, right? Uh, we may say oh, it's just a rising, uh, what do you say, a trend, but no, I mean, there is enough and more proof to suggest that, you know, uh, people are more conscious, right? Not only anecdotal, but also, uh, you know, a, a consumer experience suggests that, you know, they would now nowadays want to know what these ingredients even stand for, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's where uh, I think black pack becomes a quick shortcut to understand that, okay, if it is black pack, then there is nothing wrong with the food inside. There is no artificial preservatives. There is no color, right? The, the figuratively or literally, there is no color added to the food at all, right? Uh, so right. there's no tampering with preservatives, chemicals, nothing, right? It's it's basically food as it's supposed to be, as it meant to be. So that became our going in principle. Uh, and yeah, and we were very sure that we wanted to use uh, Rohit himself as the media, yeah. right? And that's why we launched ourselves on Instagram. We launched ourselves on the Instagram reel format uh, yeah. for Rohit Sandal. And I think uh, the numbers are there to see in public, right? I mean, it's visible. No, absolutely, absolutely. It's 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 a achieving impressive viewership also. But you know, also I I am I'm wondering what are the next things you're planning with Rohit Sharma as you got him on board and you slightly touched upon the fact also why Rohit Sharma was a great fit for this. So if you'd like to you know talk more about that also and you know any future plans that you have with him. So uh, one thing is very clear that. Uh, of course, we have the licensed brand that is going to be right. launched very soon, right? So we are in the process of, uh, like we are getting great response, initial response. Uh, uh, there is a lot more interest amongst our channel partners to uh, get the brand in, in their hand. Uh, we are getting requests for exclusivity. So uh, there's a lot of good response that's come our way, right? So that's there's a lot of interest that's come up. Uh, for us, it's of a high, very, very high priority to launch it uh, during the sale period that's going to happen next month, right? So that's that is the going in uh, thinking for us as a team that we have to get it out there um sure i mean like how you saw the first two videos uh, of rohit uh, there is of course the third one that is going to come very soon uh, that will basically help us launch the rs by true elements range of uh, products right and uh, with under rs by true elements we are launching products under three categories which is breakfast uh, we're going to launch it in uh, seed mixes and uh, healthy snacking. So there are three categories of focus. Uh, of course, there are there's a there is an innovation pipeline ahead of us, but uh, you know it's it'll all depend upon what is the kind of feelers we are getting from the market. You know which category is doing well for us. You know where are we able to make the dent quickly? It's going to depend a lot on those. Right, right, and you know. Um... You spoke about how the consumer is aware today. They're reading the labels. They want to know what uh, what are the, you know, harmful substances that are in their food and everything around it. So, you know, True Elements has been built on a, you know, foundation of that. We'll not put anything wrong. And if we do, whatever we put in, we'll let you know. Yes. So how do you plan to maintain that authenticity and trust as you scale, especially since it is, you know, the driving force for the category in which you operate? So, uh, so Ritika, one thing is very clear that uh, we will not possibly go into categories, uh, no matter what be the TAM, no matter what be the, the size of price out there, if it is asking us to compromise our values, right? So that is very, very clear, right? And the, the converse also holds true that we will go into the categories which demands cleaning up, right? Which demands that products be made 
processed food be made in a way that it's food and less of chemicals right so we yeah. will go we will hunt on those categories too so both hold true for us right so uh, we won't compromise no matter what no matter what we are not going to compromise on the fact that uh, we will put only what is food inside our packs right so our our take up take a case of our muesli right i mean today if you want to take a you can uh, make our muesli in your home right all the ingredients are there in back of bag you can just get them from wherever you want to and just make a good batch of true elements muesli right in your home right it is that simple right. to retrofit our product right i mean but that's the whole point right we want to make food simple right the way it is uh and that's why our focus of, is going to be on categories which are a um, you know uh, something that's that that is rare right now there in our consumers kitchens right um uh, so she's already buying it but uh, she would want to have like a, a better version of it a cleaner version of it which is devoid of preservatives chemicals uh, you know artificial sweeteners and colors etc uh, and and of course there are categories which are you know uh, uh, known for you know adding stuff that are not required to be added in food we are going to take a crack at it those you know at those also so we are definitely going to hunt them down and get them to be you know cleaning up like cleaned up right so that's something that's in a focus right right and you know as a brand in this category specifically what are the challenges that you face in standing out because i mean traditional brands claiming to be healthy and you know nutrition uh, based food is also there d2c players new players coming up for wellness specifically are also there so how are you sort of navigating that competition um uh, i think uh, i think it's 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 uh, while there are players who have been you know seniors to us in this category right uh, so to say i mean they are they are prevalent they are the most salient brands when it comes to the categories we are playing i think our offer is coming more on the product that we have made and not just the claim we are making or not just because how why roy the saying right roy the saying because there is the truth in the product right the, the product is demonstrating what he is saying that right? if he is saying 100% real and nothing artificial it actually means 100% real and nothing artificial uh, right. you would not find uh, anything that you won't understand on on a back of back of our muesli uh, or our snack mixes or our seed right. mix right it doesn't have or anything that you cannot buy in a grocery store you can't find it in our pack right uh, is as as simple as that uh, right. as long as we are true to this value system we are true to this value proposition uh, we are going to create our own uh, distinctive mark right and and the whole uh, idea of black pack being the solution to you know what is wrong in processed food today uh, should help us carve a certain uh, distinctive distinctiveness on the shelf when we sit against our competition may that be the traditional leaders or even the new age brands like us i think that should be able to give you know clear distinctiveness to our consumers who walk into the aisle right and you know uh, consumers are con consistently changing and uh, today consumers want that the brands that they purchase from or they actively consume are also taking into consideration the fact that where they are uh, you know uh, adopting sustainable practices or not uh, whether uh, their packaging is sustainable and everything else so what's your take on that as a brand uh, i mean when it comes to sustainability like for us it's not a a keyword right for us it's it's the way we have always done our uh, you know product development it we have always ensured our packaging is something that we can or rather if we have to use plastic we have made sure that we also give a service to our consumers who can you know call us to collect those plastic and we recycle them and we just re we recycle them into cooking fuel and we redistribute it to rural areas right so we we for us sustainability is a is a is a way we do our business uh, we were the first company uh, first brand in india which made uh, an entirely upcycled product called the cereal biscuit unfortunately it's Uh, no more in production, but it is a patented product that we have made, right? Which is the entire entire product is made only out of jawar, right? Only out of right. jawar. So right. even even sweetened with the stem of uh, the the nectar from the stem of jawar, right? So it is the stem nectar which is being used to uh, sweeten it, right? So for us, it's of course not a yeah, it's of course not a the new buzzword or a keyword. Uh, it's a part of what we've been doing uh, for the last so seven to eight years since the existence of the brand, right? So it's a way of life. It's our part. 
and uh, as our consumers you can also participate with us right any consumer can just scan the back of pack see the entire supply chain for themselves uh, know where know where the product has been procured from from which farmer to you know when is it being processed everything is there out in front so there is nothing hidden anywhere it's right there transparent in front of you uh, and i mean you can just log on to our website uh, you know schedule a pickup of your uh, 12 months packs we'll just take it back home and we'll recycle it again so as i told you again uh, and also whatever we do right we have tried to ensure that uh, we would not compromise on the sustainability values uh, that is going to hamper our community our surroundings our environment in any way right so even like the plastic example is one such but even uh, reusing recycling and upcycling of products itself right that itself uh, comes from our philosophy of what do we make has to be sustainable in nature that it's good for us it's true to us true to the planet true to our people and true to our world right so that's that's pretty much the the philosophy we have um uh, and when it comes to uh, driving conversions i i mean we are still yet to see sustainability as a proposition that drives conversion um unfortunately while we definitely had a good set of customers who would want to buy our cereal biscuits uh, we were unable to actually drive a lot of volume uh, for it because uh, consumer demand on that is uh, yet to pick up right so right. so so it's still there like it's there in parts uh but i would still say that's that's more an emerging trend of sorts uh yet to be seen in you know in in, in business terms yet to see a value attached to sustainability right so that's right. where we are at. uh could you also help me understand your uh, core target market like the demographics age wise uh i for for now uh, i think it's very uh, i think it's very very sharp uh we are looking at you know the the urban metro and the tier 1 cities right uh, and we are looking at uh, i mean we don't have a gender distribution or anything we don't i mean we talk to everybody and uh, we talk to a wider age group um, we are just sharp we are just sharp on the kind of audience we reach out to ensure that we also have a very efficient media campaign right so uh, so which 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 means that we'll be talking to a certain age group uh, certain geographies which are our top geographies right now first we'll definitely have a look at how that's working for us and then we will definitely scale it to a slightly more broader audience right because the first proof of success has to come from where we are strong already so right. yeah so that's where we are at. where exactly are your strongest markets then uh, i think while tier ones are growing for us when it comes to offline distribution right uh i think it's still the metros and the mini metros that contribute to you know uh, as with all digital first brand i think they are the ones who are contributing uh to the growth right so i think that's where our first set of audiences are because distribution of these these categories are also wider in these markets so first set come, would come from there but uh i think possibly within a couple of months we are going to scale it up pan india right and uh, if you could also talk a little about your digital and social media strategy and how you are you know using it to engage with consumers specifically young adults it would be great so uh, ritika if you look at my uh, i mean if you look at our, our 12 elements is instagram right and as I, as i told you that all our launches are going to happen on instagram feeds right right, right. Uh, that's where my consumers are right now till the time they are not right till the time they'll not be there i might have to we might have to see what we can do but for now and for for a better part of the next coming few months i think they are going to be predominantly be on that platform and then that become, that platform becomes a p1 for me when it comes to reaching out to the right audiences right uh, which also means that i am going to over invest on that platform in terms of building credibility driven content right uh, which means uh, you will find us building more uh, content that will drive uh education of what the brand is about and uh you know how we are trying to bring about change right we are already trying to do it if you would look at my instagram over the last 3 uh, to 4 months it's been a lot uh, educative it's a lot informative however with a, a a slightly lighter tone of voice right we are not uh, instructive or pedagogical or uh, you know preachy we are little afraid of being these three 
So uh, we take a slight bit of uh, root from humor. We might take inspiration from memes, right? Because uh, we feel that our audiences are uh, are someone who consumes content in these formats, right? right. Uh, it's not that uh, there's a certain content that only reaches out to a certain audience. No, that's not true. Uh, at least what we have realized is our audiences are consuming these kind of content uh, and pretty much uh, pretty much on a daily basis. So that just helps us to, you know, understand what kind of content should be put out, uh, makes it more sharper for us to understand where should we invest, how much. And uh, while Instagram becomes our, you know, port of getting organic reach and discovery for the brand, we will definitely use the entire uh, Meta and Google ecosystem to reach out right. to our consumers at scale, right? So that is for sure uh, a part of our digital stack. Uh, and there is a lot of emphasis on, uh, you know, our activations within each channels we are present in. For example, uh, may that be an Amazon or a Flipkart or quick commerce in Blinkit, Zepto and Instamart. Uh, you might see, you will see uh, a lot more uh, interventions from our brand. Right. So that will ensure that we are covering the entire funnel right at all points. You will always see us uh, trying to make a mark. Uh, most certainly, right, we should be able to identify the progress in a couple of buying cycles. Right. right. And, uh, you know, how do you sort of see the future of health foods evolving in India in the coming few years? Ah, OK. Uh, a little a little debatable, but uh, uh, one, we speak of health, but uh, our actions don't really line up with, uh, you know, our, our wishful thinking of being healthy and staying healthy, right? So uh, I think I think the first step, which I feel our uh, people at large are going to do is uh, try to eat less processed or rather try to minimize food that is excessively processed and, uh, you know, prefer food that is least processed or as close to food as possible. I think uh, we've always found out from experts, from our own understanding and learnings that diet forms an important part of health. So uh, thanks to the new awareness wave of reading the back of pack, I think first things first, everyone would want to replace certain ingredients in their food that they're already you know, using it uh, by choice or by accident, thanks to awareness they would now replace it uh, steadily. So a certain kind of oil might be replaced, a certain kind of oil, a certain sweetener get replaced, a certain sweetener, right? I think that's the first step of uh, being healthy. Uh, and, and going forward, then we will probably start seeing, uh, you know, shift to a more premium, uh, you know, willingness to pay more premium to buy, uh, you know, better quality, better, better, you know, better ingredients. So I think that's going to happen step by step. But first things first, I think, we are going to see a, a you know slight replacement of ingredients to a healthier version first. Mm -hmm. right? And so, uh, yeah. as a brand, are you ready for that change? Yeah, I mean we are poised. I mean we are we are the one who hope we 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 hope that we would be one of the reasons that this change would happen. Uh, right. we, we definitely hope that uh, people who use our more bigger larger. Uh, you know, senior brands who are there right now, uh, they would they would be compelled to look at the back of pack, uh, compare it with compare it with us, right? I mean, we want the people to take the black pack in hand, take take our black pack in hand, look the BOP, take any colorful pack in the eye, look the BOP, and evaluate, right? I mean, uh, check for yourself, right? There is no other way to actually understand what's right and what's wrong, right? Try for right. yourself. So right. I think a lot more emphasis will be put by us to drive trials at scale over the next few months. So uh, let's see. We hope to make it happen. Right. And uh, anything else that you maybe like to add? Uh, just that I think uh, we have got, we literally have a one in a billion opportunity to, uh, you know, change the way India eats. Right. Uh, I think this is just the beginning of it. Uh, first things first is just to understand, like, how are people going to receive true elements? Like, basically, uh, the proof is in the pudding. Right. So, uh, the next few months are going to be extremely crucial in terms of understanding how the campaign goes forward in the future, uh, our product innovation pipeline, um, you know, and everything, everything will be going hand in hand over the next few months. So yeah, let's see.
exciting stuff i can't wait to see what's next coming from you the festive season all the best to you for that i hope you have a great one thank you so much for doing this today it was a pleasure thank you rithika thank you so much team